Good morning, boy, my church family. May this message find you well and blessed on this morning. I have a word this morning of encouragement from David. If you would turn your Bibles to Psalms 34, verses 15 through 22. Psalm 34, 15 through 22. The Bible reads, The eyes of the Lord are on the righteous, and his ears are attentive to their cry. But the face of the Lord is against those who do evil. To blot out their name from the earth, the righteous cry out. And the Lord hears them. He delivers them from all their troubles. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted and saves those who are crushed in spirit. The righteous person may have many troubles, but the Lord delivers him from them all. He protects all his bones. Not one of them will be broken. Evil will slay the wicked. The foes of the righteous will be condemned. The Lord will rescue his servants. No one who takes refuge in him will be condemned. In that passage of, of scripture this morning, David reminds us that the eyes and the heart of God are upon those that love him. He reminds us that all we have to do is cry out and the Lord will hear us. Verse 17 says that he delivers us out of all of our troubles. It reminds us that he can repair a broken heart. He could fix a crushed spirit. And as we continue to read the, packet, the passage, the Bible talks about deliverance. Verse 9 says that the righteous person may have many troubles, but God delivers the righteous from them all. It means being freed from whatever it is that's weighing you down. And overall, it tells me that there is victory on the way. I know that help is coming and that help is coming from the Lord. And that's why we love God. That's why we love our Lord. Why? Because he first loved us. But maybe you haven't gotten an answer yet from God. Even today, your heart may be discouraged. But just because God has delayed doesn't mean that God has denied. Just for a moment today, God has given us a message of encouragement. If you would, church, turn your Bibles with me to John chapter 5. John chapter 5 and beginning at verse 1. John 5, verse 1. The Bible reads, After this there was a feast of the Jews, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now there is at Jerusalem by the sheep market a pool, which is called in Hebrew tongue Bethesda, having five porches. In these lay a great multitude of impotent folk, of blind, halt, withered, waiting for the moving of the water. For an angel went down at a certain time, a certain season into the pool and troubled the waters. And whosoever then first, after the water was troubled, stepped in, was made whole of whatever, whatsoever disease he had. And a certain man was there, which had an infirmity 30 and eight years. When Jesus saw him lie and knew that he had been now a long time in that case, he said unto him, Wilt thou 
be made whole. Them to man answered him, Sir, I have no man when the water is troubled to put me into the pool. But while I am coming, another step is down before me. Jesus said unto him, Rise, take up thy bed, and walk. And immediately the man was made whole, and took up his bed, and walked. And on the same day was the Sabbath. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading, the hearing, and the doing of his word. And our subject for this morning is what to do when you can't make it to the pool. What to do when you can't make it to the pool. Our lesson here this morning brings us to a particular place, a pool called Bethesda. And as generic as it may seem, it's not just another title. It's not just another word that we should just glean over as we read this package, this passage. There's a meaning attached to the name Bethesda. Bethesda in its Greek form means house of mercy. Hebrews 4 and 16 reminds of where our mercy lies. It reads, let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in the time of need. Let us make our way to a place of permanent healing on this morning. We see in our passage that Many have found their way to the pool to await the angel that troubles or moves the water. And we see a laundry list of physical ailments, sicknesses, impotence, blind, lame, crippled. But coupled with God's grace and his mercy and our sincere, prayerful request, God can heal the physical body, if it be his will. But maybe today you don't have a physical ailment or an outward affliction. Perhaps you look good on the outside. You seem to have it going on. Your, your pain is, is well hidden, but on the inside, you're all messed up. Perhaps you have one foot on the inside and one foot on the outside, maybe life itself is just beating you up and you're not sure what to do or where to turn. Maybe today you are again making your way to the pool for healing. And right now we're all going through something. We, we have what, they are, what they're referring to as a, a new normal a new way of life. But if we just continue to, to trust in God and continue to allow God to lead us every step of the way, we'll be okay. We may not be in a fancy building. We may not be able to be around our closest loved ones and friends, but God is still just a prayer away. We have to make our way to a, a, a real, true healing on this morning. Make your way to the house of mercy. Find your way to Christ on this morning. If you don't have a relationship with him, I will tell you on this morning, you have no idea what you're missing. If you've tried everything you know and your issues just continue to grow and grow and grow, make your way to grace this morning. Whatever you have to sacrifice, 
whoever you have to sacrifice, folks will get in your way. But regardless of what it is, lay it aside. Hebrews 12 and 1 tells us to put aside every weight that so easily besets or hinders us. Anything that gets in your way, anything that stands between you and God, we are to lay that aside. That thing you're giving, the thing that you're giving more to than you're giving to God. Those are the things that, that the Bible is telling us that we need to set aside. If it's more important to you than God, you don't need it in your life. As one that has been through heartache, through failures, through shortcomings, crying the tears of a clown, laughing on the outside and, and crying on the inside, I know the only place I can find real peace. And I thank God that, that he's given me that invitation. Of all the gifts, of all the things that God has given me in my life, the one thing that I cherish the most in this mortal body is the peace that God gives me in my life. I know the only place I can find real peace, true peace, is at the throne of mercy and grace. But patience is required for your journey. And it's something that many of us don't possess. And patience causes us to behave irrationally and do things that, that hinder our blessings. God doesn't need our help, church. Leaving behind and not trusting in self is one of the hardest things for us to do. Sometimes you have to wait for your victory. We live in a microwave society. And what we want, we want it right now. But for eternal things, eternal living, eternal life, we have to learn to wait for our victory. Now, let's look for a minute at this man at the pool. There's nothing extraordinary to set him apart from everybody else at the pool. It appears he was by himself. He had no family or friends that are spoken of within the text. But after 38 years of him continually coming to this pool, year after year after year, his family and friends, they probably given up or grown tired of this man. You know, people will let you down. I could, I, I could hear his family and friends right now. Look at you. 38 years and you're still not healed. I can hear them because I've heard it in my own life. I could hear them, man, you must be crazy. You're going down to that pool again? Just learn how to live with what you've got. Sounds kind of like Job's wife. Why don't you just curse God and die? Do you realize how much patience and faith it must have taken this man to return to that pool year after year for 38 years? I can see him, picture him in my mind, dragging himself to that pool, hand scraped and cut from pulling himself along the ground and digging in the ground and pulling himself sweaty, dirty, clothes all torn up, can't walk, being trampled over and tossed aside. But he remained patient and he remained persistent. Sometimes on your way to the cross, you get beat up, you get stepped on, you get laughed at, you get tossed aside, you lose family, you lose friends, but continue 
making your way to the cross. I can hear him waking up in the morning. I hear the encouragement in his voice. I can hear him saying, I know this. This is going to be my year. Somebody said he must have read Psalms 34. But if you keep fighting, church, if, if you, keep, you keep scraping, you keep getting up. Don't stay down for the count. Don't wallow around in, in self-pity and woe is me mentality. Keep pulling yourself up and making your way toward mercy. We're reminded over and over through scripture that while waiting on the Lord, we must exercise patience. Because at the other end of patience, we find Jesus. The man didn't make it to the pool. He struggled and fought and, 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 and tried his best to get to that healing pool. But physically, there was nothing he could do. All by himself, there was nothing he can do. And sometimes we put ourselves in that box. We put ourselves in a mindset that there's nothing else that, that I can do. But there's one thing that you can do. You can wait. You can wait on the Lord. You can be patient and wait on the Lord. Because at the other end of patience, we find Jesus. The Bible says that Jesus, in the, in the text, said that Jesus saw him. Don't think that Jesus doesn't see what you're going through. Don't think that Jesus doesn't see what we're all going through. God is not caught by surprise. Notice what the Bible says in verse 6. When Jesus saw him lie and knew that he had been now a long time in that case. And I like the use of the word case here because we all have we all have our own cases. We all have our own problems. We all have our own thought processes. We all have something going on in our lives. We all have our own case. It's the idea that uh, of his circumstance or his condition or his his issue. And that's the God we serve because Right now, this very moment, God is monitoring our case. And he's dealing with our issues. He knows the cause of your affliction. He knows where it hurts. He may not come when you want him, but he's always right on time. There are no conditions with Jesus. The pool at Bethesda came with conditions. You had to make your way to a particular place. You had to be there at a certain time. You had to be the first in the water after it was stirred by an angel. But there are no conditions with Christ. You come just as you are. All Christ needs is our faith. There are no conditions attached to his love. He's whatever we need. He's wherever we need him. He sends whomever we need. He's there whenever we need him. We often speak of Abraham and the ram in the bush. But you know what? The ram didn't show up for Abraham until he needed it. And that's when God shows up in our lives. We don't always see it. But God is 
sitting high and he's, he's looking low and he knows what we're going through. He knows what we're dealing with. But God is always right on time. First Corinthians 10 and 13 tells us no temptation has overtaken you except what is common to mankind. And God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. But when you're tempted, he will also provide a way out so that you can endure it. And the question Jesus is answering this day is, will thou be made whole? Will you today exercise that faith? Bible says, because without faith, it's impossible to please God. Will you trust in Jesus on this morning? Would you allow yourself to be opened up and exposed to Christ himself? Will you go to the throne of mercy and grace and spill out your heart, your soul, and spill out your mind and give yourself over? To Christ Jesus because he knows he sees the things that we've been dealing with and the things that we've been going through but God does not sleep there's a victory church on the other side God is continually watching over us and blessing us Jesus told the man rise take up thy bed and walk and immediately the man was made whole and took up his bed and walked and on the same day was the Sabbath. Our lesson wouldn't be complete without an invitation for you to become a member of the Lord's body. The Bible tells us that we must hear the gospel, Romans 10, 17, believe on that gospel, Hebrews 11 and 6, repent of past sins, Luke 13 and 3. Confess faith in Jesus Christ, Romans 10 and 10. Be baptized for remission of your sins, Galatians 3 and 27. Be faithful unto death, Revelations 2 and 10. If this message has stirred up anything in your heart, I would ask you that you would just continue to, to, to pray and to trust in God. If you have any questions about the church, contact us or any brothers and we'll get the answers that you need. And with that, we want to continue to uh, pray one for another. Uh, in particular, let's pray for Brother Harris and his family. Uh, he is uh, having surgery, so, so pray for him. Uh, pray for me and my family. And just pray uh, that we all continue just to allow God to lead us uh, to where he wants us to be. Let us bow for a short prayer. Father God, we just thank you so much for allowing us to uh, come together as brothers and sisters in, in heart and mind. And we thank you, Father God, for this, this avenue you've given us to, uh, to for life. We love you, Father. We just thank you so much for loving us. It's in the holy and divine name of Jesus the Christ. We pray we these and all blessings. Amen.